Welcome back to this lecture series on pulse width modulation for power electronic converters. Now, we have been discussing power electronic converters for quite a while now over the last 4 lectures and this is probably going to be the 5th lecture. Now, as we discussed earlier power electronics involves control conditioning and conversion of electric power. Electric power might be available in the form of you know a DC or AC of a particular frequency and an amplitude you might want AC voltage or DC voltage of another amplitude you know of AC of some other frequency. So, we, so we, we know we need electric power conversion because many times the load that we have might have a different power supply requirement from what is available like that is what we have been discussing all through we, we may have a 230 volt 50 hertz mains available, but the load might need 110 volt DC. So, you need rectification you might need you might have a 400 volt 50 hertz 3 phase AC available, but your motor induction motor might need a 200 and 200 volt 250 hertz uh, supply voltage. So, in such kind of situations you need you know conversion is required and that is why we have power electronic converters now and here the conversion is primarily done based on uh, switches. So, first we discussed about various switches electronic switches like various semiconductor devices such as diodes, thyristors, IGBTs, MOSFETs etcetera which can act as switches. Then we went on to converters how do you use switches to do a DC to DC conversion now from DC to DC conversion we moved on to DC to AC conversion and in DC to AC conversion we looked at voltage source inverters and current source inverters. I mean DC could be available either as a voltage source or current source. So, you know depending on that you might need a voltage source inverter or a current source inverter. So, we discuss both possibilities now. Then in DC to AC conversion we have been moving to another step which is called multi level converters and we discussed multi level converters you know some aspects of multi level converters last time and we are going to continue this this is the second lecture on multi level converters now. So, let us take a look at what is a conventional two level voltage source inverter this is the standard three phase two level voltage source inverter I would call this as a two level voltage source inverter because of one reason I would call this as a two level voltage source why if I have my you know all these are single pole double throw switches let me consider this point R which is a pole which is the midpoint of a leg this V R measured with respect to the DC bus neutral O can only take two values here either plus V D C by 2 or minus V D C by 2 hence we call this as a two level voltage source inverter. Now, in this case you know all these are so R is connected either to the positive bus or negative bus through a single pole double throw switches for every leg you have a single pole double throw switch and these three poles are connected to the loads and the loads are presumed to be inductive here An inductance current through an inductive circuit should never be opened you should always provide path for it to flow through. Therefore, the load terminals are connected to the poles and the pole is going to be connected either to one throw or the other throw and so, eh, therefore, there is a path is always going to be available here now and as we was, was also remarked earlier this is really a bidirectional power converter power can actually flow in both the directions it is not necessary that needs to flow from the DC side to the AC side. You have a DC supply here let us say current can be flowing like this and here this is be DC and this can be DC plus ripple flowing like this let me call this as IDC let me call this as some IDC plus I tilde certain ripple current I will also call it right tilde DC just to say that it is on the DC side now. So, what we are going to see is you know and the, and the ripple is flowing through the capacitance. Now, the power flow is in which direction it is from the DC side to the AC side that is what it means now and here again you would see the power factor on the load side if you look at the fundamental voltage and the fundamental current they will be close to one another their phase will be you know close to 0 or you know within 90 degrees plus or minus and therefore, the power is flowing in the opposite direction in one direction from DC to AC. Can power flow in the opposite direction? Of course, power can also flow in the opposite direction if you make sure that this IDC is now in the opposite direction. If you say this IDC is in the opposite direction and if you look at the phase relationship here the voltage and current could be could have a phase difference of 180 degrees let us say instead of 0 degrees. So, that basically means power is flowing in the opposite direction it is actually a bidirectional uh, converter power can flow in either direction that is the point that I would like to make now 
and this is called a voltage source inverter because you can apply certain voltage at this pole irrespective of the direction of current that is flowing through the current can be in both the directions. This is what we take took into account while designing the switches. What did we do? We realized a single pole double throw switch using two such IGBTs. These are capable of conducting in both the directions. So, and when this is conducting like this, this will be blocking a potential, the lower transistor will be blocking a potential equal to the DC bus voltage with polarity as shown here. The same way when the bottom is conducting and the top is turned off. So, it depends on whichever direction the load current flows. Depending on the direction of load current, it is either the transistor or the diode which is going to conduct now. So, this is how you realize a single pole double throw switch. If you call one of them as SR and if you call the bottom as SR bar. So, these two are actually switched in a complementary fashion if the top is on the bottom is off and vice versa. So, it is a single pole double throw switch now and R can take you know either plus 0.5 VDC or minus 0.5 VDC with respect to O. Similarly, Y can take either plus 0.5 VDC or minus 0.5 VDC with respect to O. The difference between R and Y can be either plus VDC or 0 or minus VDC that is what we have. Now, we want to see whether between R and Y we can have only plus VDC 0 and minus VDC, why not have plus or minus 0.5 VDC for example. So, that is if you want to do something like that then you need what we call as a 3 level voltage source inverter. A 2 level is what we saw before and a 3 level is now what we are going to look at right. So, now this is the 2 level voltage source inverter where every leg is a single pole double throw switch now it is all a single pole double throw switch there are 2 throws here. If you look at the lower picture, there are three throws here, there are three throws. As before the load is presumed to be inductive and therefore, the load terminals are connected to the poles. The poles are always connected to one throw or the other. Therefore, the, there will always be some path available for the load current to flow through. Now, what we have is or this pole can be connected to let us say the positive throw plus or it can be connected to the middle throw 0 or it can be connected to the bottom throw minus. Earlier it could be connected only to the positive DC bus terminal or the negative DC bus terminal. Here it is it can never it could not be connected to the DC bus midpoint. Now, we are able to connect it to the DC bus midpoint also. So, we use a single pole triple throw switch and the third pole uh, or the middle pole is used for doing that now. So, this is a 3 level voltage source inverter whenever you are talking of a 3 level, 4 level or anything you know 3 or above, we call it by the generic name multi level voltage source inverter now. Generally, we would be in this course by and large when we say multi level inverter, we would mean a 3 level inverter. It is also possible for you to have a single pole 4 throw switch for example, 4 different voltage potentials here instead of 3 potentials plus 0 and minus, it is possible to have 4 different potentials and have a single pole 4, four throw switch. Similarly, in the DC you can it is possible to have 5 different potentials and have a single pole 5 throw switch. So, this would be called 4 level inverter and you know 5 level inverter and so on. So, all these are multi level inverters, but we you know in this course when we say multi level inverter we usually mean a 3 level inverter that is true even otherwise. So, now we look at you know we in fact already looked at how do we realize this uh, single pole triple throw switch. So, now before that we just wanted to see why a 3 level inverter just to reinstate our idea now that, that is uh, I mean the concepts. Now, R need not be just connected to plus or minus it can be connected to 0 also. Similarly, if you look at the potential between R and Y for example, V or Y can take either plus V D C or minus V D C as in a 2 level inverter. It can also take either plus V D C or minus V D C by 2 besides 0. These are all the various values that it can take. In a 2 level inverter it is only plus or minus V D C or 0. In a 3 level inverter this one is extra it can be plus or minus VDC by 2 also. So, there are more number of voltage levels available at the output and therefore, it is possible for you to follow a sinusoidal waveform better. See what you ideally want at the output is a sinusoidal waveform you are never going to get that now because you know we are using DC and we are trying to produce uh, AC out of DC. So, there is going to be always some amount of uh, non sinusoidal components it is going to be distorted now. We want to move closer. So, one way is you know if the voltage levels this this provides you certain additional voltage levels or intermediate voltage levels. So, that you can follow a sine voltage waveform better. We will you know discuss more of this later. 
Now another important reason why you want is your DC bus voltage may be high. In India we have three phase motors which are typically rated something like 400 volts to 440 volts uh, RMS line to line. Now in some other countries it could be 110 volts or 208 volts or whatever. We may also have you know when you go to higher and higher power levels the motor voltage rating may also be higher. It could be higher than a kV for example, it can be a few kilo volts. So, such motors are called medium voltage motors and to drive a medium voltage motor you might need an inverter. In such a kind of a scenario what you will have is you know you, you a 3 level inverter or a multi level inverter is quite useful here. Now you will have a higher DC bus voltage because your motor voltage is now higher and therefore correspondingly you also need a higher DC bus voltage now. If you have a higher DC bus voltage you need switches which can block so much of DC voltage whenever they are in off state. The you need switches whose voltage ratings are substantially higher than whatever DC voltage that you use now. If your DC voltage is, is something like let us say about 3 kilo volts or you know 5 kilo volts or 6 kilo volts it, it will not be possible for you to have you know it may, you may not have devices to do this now. So, in one thing that you might do is go in for series connection of devices. So, that you know you can match the required voltage rating, but better than going for series connection is such a multi level configuration now. So, this is again something that we will see a little later. So, you here you need only you know devices of voltage ratings VDC by 2 as we will see shortly. So, these are the two primary reasons I mean to you know handle higher DC bus voltages and to produce a superior waveform quality output waveforms of superior quality are the two primary reasons why one would probably go for a 3 level inverter just you know basic motivation now. We have been looking at actually how would you realize the switch now if you want to realize one part of the switch pole P to throw T1 the three different states are available here now. In this first case pole P is connected to T1 now. So, the current can be bidirectional therefore, the current between P and T1 needs to be bidirectional now. If you take the second state the switch between P and T1 or I mean the switches between them are in the off state now and T1 is positive with respect to P and you have a potential difference of VDC by 2 you have a potential difference of VDC by 2. If you take the third state again the switches are the devices between P and T1 are in the off state and they are blocking a potential earlier it was VDC by 2 now the potential is VDC. So, this is what you need now you need a switch between P and T1 which can conduct in both the directions and it can block a potential with this polarity as indicated here of you know with plus and minus of DC bus voltage I mean uh, the voltage equal to DC bus voltage now. So, if you look at the second pole to throw 3 the story is same when it is connected between pole and throw 3 you need a bidirectional conduction now when, when this pole P is connected to throw T1 P is basically connected to the positive bus T3 is always connected to the negative bus and it has to block a potential equal to VDC whereas if you take this case again the polarity is the same it is blocking but the voltage blocked is only VDC by 2 and VDC is higher of these two right. So, if you take the pole P to the middle throw then what you have is is slightly interesting again when it is on it has to conduct in either directions because the load current could be in either direction. When it is off and when P and T1 are connected P is positive and this throw is negative and the potential coming between the two is VDC by 2. When pole P is connected to throw T3 once again you know the devices between P and T2 are in the off condition now. But if you look at the, the potential is the same VDC by 2 but if you look at the polarity it is now the opposite of what it was. Here the throw is positive with respect to pole earlier the you know the throw was positive I mean uh, the pole was positive with respect to pole now. So, what you need between P and T2 is a 4 quadrant switch this is what we saw in the last lecture whereas between P and T1 and P and T3 what we need are 2 quadrant switches which can block you know voltage of one polarity but can conduct in either direction. So, what you can have as a first cut realization is like this now. So, if you look at this obviously it can conduct in both the direction the transistor can conduct in this direction and the diode can conduct in this direction when P and T1 are to be connected. In such a scenario you have the bottom switch the transistor blocking a potential equal to VDC with polarity as indicated above. Now, what you have is you have T1 connected to P therefore, P is connected to plus 
V D C. So, now this is I mean plus V D C by 2 with respect to the midpoint. Now, one of the switches should be blocking here and this is positive with respect to P is now positive with respect to T 2. So, if you take this path, this diode will be blocking and if you take this path, this transistor will be blocking this potential equal to V D C by 2 here. This potential is V D C by 2. Correct. Now, if you take now this is what when P is connected to T 1, the story will be similar when P is connected to T 3. In that case, the bottom transistor or the diode will conduct depending on the direction of the load current and the top transistor will be blocking a potential equal to plus minus V D C. And here again you may have a V D C by 2 blocked by the other uh, transistor and the other diode uh, as we observed before. If P and T 2 are connected together, let us say P and T 2 are connected. So, T 1 and T 2 are in the off condition. In such a scenario, what you will find is both these will be blocking some potentials equal to V D C by 2. And the direction of current depends on you know the conduction depends on this direction of current. If I say this is the direction of current, then the current will flow through this arm. If I say the direction of current is different like here in the opposite direction, then current would flow through this branch. So, this is what will happen now. So, here you know the situation is what we need is it is not enough if you have a blocking potential of V D C by 2, you need switches which can block up to V D C. So, this is what you know you still need a higher DC bus voltage rating. What we need to see is you know we, we want to use only switches whose voltage ratings are V D C by 2 basically. So, what we do is we connect two of them in parallel. In this situation let us say there is a current flowing it could be in either direction. In that scenario current can be either flowing through the transistors or through the diodes. We are presuming that P and T 1 are now connected and the bottom devices can be blocking potential of V D C by 2 each like this. Of course, this presumes that the voltage is shared more or less equally, but which need not be the case now. To some extent a multi level converters configuration can help which we will see now. Before we go there, let us try and see whether we need all these transistors. We totally have 6 transistors, do we need all these transistors is one of the questions that we really want to see now. So, that is where we, we come to this kind of a realization that can be seen from here. So, let us say P should be connected to T 2, this is pole P, this should be connected to the throw T 2. In such a case, pole P should not be connected to T 1, pole P should not be connected to T 1. How do you ensure that? It can be ensured by having either one of the two top transistors, let me call them as S 1 and S 2. Both of them could be off or even one of them could be off. So, it is enough if one of them could be off and it is enough if S 1 alone could be off. So, if it is going to conduct, if it is going to conduct for example, it is conducting to both these transistors now. So, both the transistors are not actually required to separate this T 2 from T 1. So, let me say why not make a connection like this. Let me consider these two points and let me say what happens if you connect these two like this nothing because if P and T 2 are to be connected if S 1 is turned off there will not be any connection between P and T 1 only there will be a connection between P and T 2 and current will flow either through this diode and this transistor. So, there is no problem it can conduct like this. Similarly, you can also make a connection like this on the lower side. So, these two transistors are can actually be in parallel or they can be replaced by the same transistor by a single transistor. So, you do not really need two different transistors and that is what you have as your usual realization. This one we call as S 1, this one we call as S 2, this one we call as S 3, this one we call as S 4. So, S 1 and S 2 will be on for you to connect this pole P to the top throw. S 2 and S 3 will be on to connect pole P to the throw T 2 and S 3 and S 4 will be on to connect pole P to throw T 3. This is what we said now. So, we have been saying that you know the waveform quality is better than that of a two level inverter. 
let us see how. See what you normally need is this potential is or we know this is plus V D C by 2, this potential is 0, this potential is minus V D C by 2. What we normally do with any switching converter is at the pole we realize an average voltage which is somewhere between the voltages of the various throws correct. When in, in a case of a DC DC converter let us say a buck converter we realize a pole voltage average pole voltage which is somewhere between the DC bus voltage and 0 and here similarly we will realize an average pole voltage which is somewhere between the voltages of throw T1 and 0 or you know throw T2 or between that of throw T2 and throw T3 that is it can be anywhere between plus V D C by 2 and minus V D C by 2. If pole P is connected to throw T1 I mean we are considering a small interval of time we are considering let us say a small interval of time this what do you mean by small interval this is much smaller than the fundamental modulating frequency that we are talking about now. In this small interval of time if pole P is always connected to throw T1 then the average voltage is plus V D C by 2. If it is always connected to throw T3 then the average voltage is minus V D C by 2. If pole P is always connected to throw T2 the average voltage is 0. Now let us say you have some potential like this let me call this as 0.25 V D C. If I were to realize this 0.25 V D C using a two level inverter what I would do is I will apply some plus V D C by 2 and for a long time and minus V D C by 2 for a shorter time. This is plus V D C by 2 and this is minus V D C by 2. For roughly 75 percent of the time if I apply plus V D C by 2 and minus V D C by 2 I get an average like this. This is the situation in a two level inverter. If I consider a three level inverter, if I consider a three level inverter what I can do is I can apply you know either plus V D C by 2 or 0. I can apply plus V D C by 2 for half the time and apply 0 for another half the time. So, this will also produce I mean the same average voltage I you know my 0 is not here actually please you know ignore that mistake this is 0. So, I will apply plus V D C by 2 for half the time and 0 for remaining half the time. So, now what do I get I end up getting the same average voltage. So, I can get this 0.25 V D C by time averaging of 0.5 V D C and minus 0.5 V D C. I can also get this 0.25 V D C by time averaging of 0.5 V D C and 0 which is better time averaging of 0.5 V D C and 0 is better. Why? Because the maximum error that you have between the ideal waveform which is equal to 0.25 V D C that is what you want and the actual waveform which is what you apply is now much is lower now. So, if you if you consider this the error is only so much in a three level inverter correspondingly if you had consider a two level inverter the error is substantially higher. So, the instantaneous error between what you want that is the average voltage and what you apply that is the actual instantaneous voltage is higher in a two level inverter and is lower in a three level inverter therefore, three level inverter can actually give you a better waveform quality. So, uh, also as we said you know voltage sharing is better now the, vol the entire DC bus voltage is blocked when it needs to be blocked it is not blocked by a single device, but by both the device let us say S 1 and S 2 or the devices S 3 and S 4. Now, they also contributes to certain amount of voltage sharing see S 1 and S 2 if they are blocking a potential equal to V D C it is not necessary that they should block equal voltages they should share the voltage equally the voltage sharing could certainly be unequal. Now, here let us consider this node whenever this node goes below 0 whenever this node goes below 0 the diode will come into conduction that will force that this potential stays within V D C by 2 this potential when 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 S 1 and S 2 are blocking it will make sure that this potential stays within V D C by 2 it will not let the potential really go above that. So, some kind of check is being exercised on the voltage sharing between these two devices. So, a multi level converter is better than basically two uh, transistors with uh, you know connected in series for voltage sharing. So, let us say we move on to this is one leg this is just one leg of that if you put two such legs together let me call these terminals as A and B. So, this becomes a single phase uh, multi level inverter or a single phase three level inverter 
it is called a neutral point clamped or a diode clamped inverter as we mentioned before because what we mean by the neutral is the DC bus neutral. This DC bus neutral could be connected to the face or the output terminal or the midpoint of a leg. So, you call it neutral point clamping and you use diodes to do this kind of a clamping you know it will if you may connect conduct through either through this diode or this diode. So, you call it as a diode clamped inverter too. So, this is the name that it normally goes by. If you want a three phase inverter what you need to have is one more leg like this is necessary. You have a third leg and the three terminals the load terminals can be connected to the midpoints of the three legs R, Y and B yes. So, this is now a diode neutral clamped inverter. Now, we are just kind of summarizing a few points and understanding a three level neutral point clamped inverter better NPC is the abbreviation for neutral point clamped inverter. Now, let us say if pole P is connected to throw T 1, pole P is connected to throw T 1 that is the first state. In that case, we find that S 1 and S 2 are in the on state, the top two devices are in the on state. So, it also means that S 3 and S 4 the bottom two devices are in the off state, S 4 has to be off, S 3 also has to be off. If S 3 is not off you know then there is a possibility that the pole may get connected to 0 right. Similarly, when pole P is connected to throw T 2 then S 2 and S 3 should be on, then S 2 and S 3 should be on. So, depending on the direction of load current if the load current flows in this direction the conduction will be between we know through this diode and through this transistor. On the other hand as I mentioned before if the load current is in the opposite direction then it will flow through this transistor and here and into the DC bus midpoint. So, in such situations S 2 and S 3 will be on and S 1 and S 4 will be off this will prevent the pole from getting connected to either the top throw or the bottom throw. Now, let us say pole P and T 3 are connected together that basically means that basically means the bottom two switches S 3 and S 4 are now on and the top two S 1 and S 2 are off. So, whenever you see S 1 is on you see S 3 is off here you see S 3 is on S 1 is off here again you see S 3 is on and I am sorry this should be off there is a mistake here. So, this should be off this should be off. So, S 3 is on and S 1 is off. So, S 1 and S 3 are complementary S 1 and S 3 are switched in a complementary fashion when S 1 is on S 3 will be off and other vice versa. Similarly, let us say we have S 2 and S 4 whenever you find S 2 is on when will S 2 be on? S 2 will be on whenever you need to connect the pole to the top throw or to the middle throw. Whenever S 2 is on S 4 will be off when should S 4 be on? S 4 should be on when pole P is connected to the bottom throw. S 2 should be on whenever the pole P has to be connected to the top throw or the middle throw. S 4 should be on whenever it should be connected to the pole should be connected to the bottom throw you see that they are mutually exclusive. So, S 2 and S 4 are complementary. Similarly, S 1 and S 3 S 1 should be on only when the pole P is connected to the top throw S 3 should be on whenever the pole P has to be connected to the middle throw or to the bottom throw. So, S 1 and S 3 are complementary similarly S 2 and S 4 are complementary. So, these are certain things we see now in a two level inverter we had only two transistors. So, they need getting signals and they are switched in a complementary fashion. So, effectively you needed only one independent getting signal how about a three level inverter in three level inverter you need two getting signals may be for S 1 and S 2 or you know S 1 and S 4. So, S 3 can be generated as the complement of S 1 and S 2 or S 4 can be generated as the complement of the other. So, you need two different getting signals now right. Now, we have not really you know uh, framed uh, uh, you know we come up with a proper framework for calculating losses which we will do it much later, but nevertheless we have some idea of losses. Let us try and see you know how you know uh, the losses will be different in different devices etcetera. If you take an earlier two level inverter let us go back to one of the two level inverter. Now, this is a two level inverter now in this can we say that the losses in all the three legs will be equal? Yes, why? Because we will be controlling them in a we assume all balanced conditions there is a DC bus voltage and the load is balanced and we are controlling it in a balanced fashion. So, 
all the three legs will have equal losses and the loss in every leg is due to both the top and the bottom device and the top you have a transistor as well as diode and so on and the losses can be split into either conduction or switching loss. So, the conditions are identical now. So, if a, if a particular phase has a peak current now, the next phase will see the peak current some another you know 120 degrees later and the third phase will see the peak yet another 120 degrees later. So, they are in a balanced condition and therefore, they get heated to the equal this thing. There are some modulating uh, methods which will lead an unequal uh, uh, loading of top and bottom as we will see sometime when we are looking at this bus clamping PWM or discontinuous PWM. But we are by and large use uh, such modulation methods which load the top and the bottom equally. So, all of them will be loaded to an equal extent. So, if the top transistor conducts for certain length of time, the bottom transistor will also conduct for an equal length of time. So, and again you know the, the total losses will kind of be equal between the two. We basically, it is because of the symmetries. As long as you have all symmetries between the three phase and every phase is half wave symmetric, there is some symmetry between the positive half cycle and the negative half cycle, the top and the bottom devices they also will have equal losses now. But the situation is a little different when you go to a multi level inverter. Let us see how. Now, in this situation, let us just consider S1 and S2. When will S1 be on? S1 will be on whenever you have to connect the pole P to the top throw T1. This, this alone is a situation when S1 has to be on. When should S2 have be on? S2 needs to be on whenever pole P is connected to the throw T1 or pole P to the throw T2. So, naturally S2 is on for a longer duration than S1. So, whenever pole P is connected to throw T1, S1 is conducting and the transistor S2 could also be conducting. Well, it could be the diodes too, the corresponding diodes might also be conducting. But whenever pole P is not connected to throw T1, neither the transistor S1 or the corresponding diode will be conducting. But when pole P is connected to throw T2, half the time roughly transistor S2 or its uh, transistor S2 will conduct or for another half the time transistor S3 will conduct. So, S2 can conduct, I mean it does conduct whenever pole P is connected to throw T1 and it also conducts part I mean part of the time whenever pole P is connected to throw T2 depending on the load direction. If the load direction is and as indicated by the green line, you know S2 conducts now. So, what can we say? S2 is going to conduct for longer. So, it, its conduction loss is certainly higher now. So, the same argument can be made out between S3 and S4. So, you can see that the losses in S2 and S3 are likely to be a little higher than the losses in the other two extreme devices now. So, this is something that we can make out in a fairly, fairly qualitative fashion. So, we will evaluate losses particularly in the case of a two level inverter much later in this course and that will also give us a necessary background to actually evaluate losses in a three level inverter. Now, we are just trying to see qualitatively how these things are you know affecting now. So, you would normally find that the middle two devices probably suffer a greater amount of loss that is what you should expect at this point of time now. What I want to say is this is not the only way a three level inverter can be realized. What do I mean by three level inverter? I have this pole which I call as R which is same as the R phase terminal and the, that pole there is a voltage at that pole V at R measured with respect to O, O being the DC bus midpoint. Now, a three level inverter can produce I mean value of VRO which is either plus VDC by 2 or minus VDC by 2 as in the case of a two level inverter and also 0 and also 0. So, this is how it is different now. Can we have other possibilities other than what we have come up with as a you know three level neutral point clamp inverter which can give you these values of VRO being 0 also in addition to plus or minus 0.5 VDC that is what we are going to see. One alternative that we can think of is a flying camp flying capacitor inverter which we come to here now. Before that let us just see we will go to some higher levels of multi level inverter now. So, this is called a four level inverter. It is called a four level inverter because you know you have four different potentials available here. There are 
four different nodes, four different potentials available and then you have four different throws. You have 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it is a single pole fourth row switch and the fourth rows are connected to four different potentials. So, here your V R O, O being the midpoint which is not indicated explicitly here, O is really the midpoint which is really the average of the two extreme potentials. If you look at your V R O, it can be plus or minus V D C by 2. If R is connected to the top throw or bottom throw, you get plus V D C by 2 minus V D C by 2 as in a two level inverter. In addition to that, you also get potentials plus or minus V D C by 6. If R is connected to the second throw or the th third throw, you get potentials plus V D C by 6 or minus V D C by 6 respectively. So, this is a four level inverter. You have you, your pole voltage has four different levels now. Similarly, you can also have a five level inverter. In this case, you see that there are five different potentials 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. These are connected to five different throws and you have a single pole five throw switch. You have a single pole five throw switch here. Here you have a four throw switch, here you have five throw switch now. So, here you have your VRO equal to several values, it is equal to plus or minus VDC by 2 as you would normally have in a two level inverter. In addition, VRO can take values of plus or minus VDC by 4 also, if it is connected here or there and it of course, it can also take the value 0. So, it can take 5 different values plus or minus V D C by 2 plus or minus V D C by 4 and 0. So, you call this as a 5 level inverter now. So, how do you realize these 4 level and 5 level inverters is a question. So, it is actually a single pole 4 throw switch and you can come by realizing it one by one follow the same steps that we followed in a single pole triple throw switch now. So, what you will now get is you see that there are earlier we had 4 transistors here. Now, we have 2 transistors more at the extreme ends this is what we have. And also you have instead of two different sets of series capacitors you have three sets of capacitors and the capacitors carry a voltage equal to V D C by 3. So, three sets of capacitors each support a voltage of V D C by 3 together it adds to the total DC bus voltage V D C. So, these points 1, 2, 3 and 4 points are connected now. So, the middle two points particularly plus V D C by 6 and minus V D C by 6 are connected through a set of diodes either to one of these intermediate points, these intermediate points here. They are connected there and so they then through the other transistor or the diode they can conduct to R for example. So, you, you have a single pole four throw switch realized here. For example, if you if you say R is conducting in a particular direction, if let us say the current is flowing in this particular direction and let us say the pole has been connected to V D C by 6 this throw, then the current can flow through this diode through this transistor and through this transistor and can flow out now. Let us take another example that is the current is flowing in the opposite direction now, in the opposite direction and it is connected to the same the pole is connected to the same throw. In such a scenario, it will connect through the bottom transistor and it will go up through these two diodes and go there. So, that is how the direction of current flow is. Similarly, you know you can see the situation you can study the situation where the pole is connected to the other throw which is equal to minus V D C by 6. So, every time you in you increase that some two more transistors get increased and the voltage level gets increased by one more. You have one additional set of series uh, connected capacitor. In case of a three level inverter you had two sets of capacitors in series, in case of a four level you have three of them in series. If you go to five level you will have four of them in series now. So, then you have more number of transistors and you also have diodes which will go and clamp them or connect them to the appropriate nodes. So, this is how you have a four level inverter. If you want to go for a five level inverter it, it, it just goes up like this now. So, this is very very popular all these are diode clamped inverters. So, they are you know you are used diode for clamping. The alternative option that I was trying to say to realize V R O is of different values. This is also an inverter where I can realize V R O equal to plus or minus V D C by 2 as in the case of a two level inverter and also 0. This is another thing. What do I do here? I used charge capacitors. So, there are two sets of capacitors which are 
charged in series to voltages I mean they are charged to voltage levels of VDC by 2. These two sets of capacitors are in series now they are supported they are fed from some voltage source here of plus minus as I have indicated here now. So, these two are firmly connected their terminals are firmly connected to uh, you know a voltage source let us say. Now, we have yet another capacitor the same value C let, let us call these values as C and it is also charged to plus you know 0.5 VDC with polarity as indicated here now. So, what I can do is I can if I add this if I use a switch like this S1 and close this switch then the potential at this point this is the potential at this point will be equal to 0 if this switch is closed. So, alternatively if let us say this switch is closed this closed then the potential here would be 0 the potential there would be 0. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to realize multiple voltage levels by connecting charged capacitors in series. So, we have one charged capacitor of 0.5 VDC we are trying to connect this in series now. So, you know this 0 it can be taken in by using a single pole double throw switch as indicated here. Now, let us say R needs to be connected to just the positive bus all that you need is R has to be connected to the top throw as here and S 1 is closed excuse me right. If R has to be connected to the bottom throw then what you need to do is R can be connected to T 2 here and S 2 can be closed then that will connect it to the bottom throw. If R has to be to the negative DC bus if R has to be connected to the DC bus midpoint you are not connecting it to the DC bus midpoint exactly, but what you are trying to do is you are doing a series connection like that you are closing S 1 and so that the potential here is 0 and you and you can close this switch. So, this combination this switch closed means this midpoint is equal to 0 and you can put your you know this single pole double throw switch can be connected to the bottom throw. So, this gives you a potential equal to 0. You can get this potential equal to 0 in another way also as indicated by the red one this switch S 2 can be closed of course, S 1 has to be opened now S 2 is closed. So, in that case what happens the potential here is 0. So, this is kept in the on condition this switch is kept in the on condition. So, you can apply 0. So, if R has to be connected to the positive DC bus there is only one way of doing the pole has to be connected to the top throw and S 1 has to be closed of course, S 2 has to be opened. If pole P has to be connected to the negative DC bus I mean uh, the R phase terminal again it is a it is unique pole has to connect to the bottom throw and S 2 has to be closed, but if the pole has to be connected to the DC bus midpoint or should be connected to the DC bus neutral a potential equal to the DC bus neutral there are two different ways for V R O is equal to 0. You can connect this pole to the top throw and the bottom switch S 2 can be on here or alternatively switch S 1 can be on and this pole P can be connected to the throw T 2. So, these are two different ways by which you can realize this. So, here also you are getting V R O is equal to 0 in two different ways now. So, you are getting V R O is equal to 0 just in the case of a 3 level inverter that is possible now in two different ways. Now, we have to see how do we realize the switch. So, if you have such switches you can you know by you know it is possible to produce V R O is equal to plus or minus V D C by 2 and also V R O is equal to 0. So, it is the same as or equivalent to a 3 level inverter you are able to apply 3 different potentials at the pole now. So, how do we realize the switches that is the first question now let us first look at how S 1 and S 2 can be realized. Now, what is going to be the direction of current flow it is an AC load. So, current can be flowing in either direction. So, if you consider switch S 1 S 1 is closed S 2 has to be open right because you know if you see the, the series potential here is V D C whereas, the potential here is only V D C by 2 therefore, closing S 1 and S 2 is not possible if S 1 is closed S 2 has to be open or vice versa, but at least one of them has to be closed otherwise the DC bus capacitors will be totally isolated from the pole voltage. So, one of them will have to be closed to make a connection now. So, either S 1 is closed or S 2 is closed now. So, let us consider the situation S 1 is closed if S 1 is closed 
then your conduction direction of conduction depends on the load current. It can be conducting either from the left to right or right to left as I have shown here now. So, the switch S1 has to be a bidirectional current carrying switch now. How about S2 correspondingly? Now, what you have done is S2 this side potential is equal to 0 whereas, this side potential is equal to negative. So, S2 is actually blocking a potential which is plus on this side and minus on this side and the potential is equal to Vdc by 2. The same scenario if you consider that S2 is on. If S2 is on this will be conducting in one of the two directions depending on the load current and here it will be blocking a potential with such polarity. S1 will be blocking potential with this polarity now because this is closed right. Here the potential is equal to that of the positive terminal. In this side the potential is equal to that of the DC bus midpoint. So, the potential difference is Vdc by 2 with polarity as indicated now. So, this is what perfectly fits our bill. This is what fits our bill. So, what you need is you get a bidirectional current carrying switch and a voltage blocking capability as shown here. The same way for S2. So, you, you just basically use an IGBT with an anti parallel diode that serves the purpose for S1 and S2 now. But now, what we need to do is we need to look at how to realize this single pole double throw switch. So, as we said before the current is bidirectional therefore, if the pole is connected to the top throw this the devices between the pole and top throw or whatever switch comes between there has to have a bidirectional current carrying capability. So, when that is there what happens here is this potential is now connected to the top throw and therefore, to the positive terminal of this capacitor. So, this comes here and this connects to the negative terminal of the capacitor. So, this is equal to minus and the potential difference is the same as what you have here. This capacitor voltage comes across the pole and the throw. So, this is what you get by having two transistors like this. You have a transistor and an anti parallel diode. So, that they have a bidirectional current carrying capability. Now, the bottom transistor can block a potential like this now. On the other hand let us say you have pole connected to throw T 2. If pole is connected to throw T 2 then this has to be bidirectional current P and T 2 between P and T 2 you need a bidirectional current carrying capability. So, that is what you have now. So, when pole is connected to throw T 2 then the top throw is positive now with respect to the bottom throw and it is blocking a potential equal to V d c by 2. It is blocking a potential equal to V d c by 2. So, this is what you have now. So, a single pole double throw switch can be realized is just the same as what we had in a let us say a voltage source inverter or so. So, this is how you realize this and we put together all the realizations. S 1 and S 2 are basically IGBTs with anti parallel diodes and the single pole double throw switch is basically a leg like this S 3 and S 4 now. This is one leg of a flying capacitor inverter. You can have yet another leg and then it I mean two legs to make a single phase inverter. You can have three such legs to make a three phase inverter now. So, now the rules are very very clear S 1 and S 2 are complementary S 1 is equal to S 2 bar. If both are if both are open there is no power the the DC side is totally isolated from the load side now it does not function the inverter is not functioning there is no power flow there. If both are on you are shorting capacitors charged to VDC by another set of capacitors charged to VDC by 2 which you cannot be doing. So, S 1 and either if S 1 is on or you know S 2 is on the other one should be off now. So, S 1 and S 2 are complementary. And of course, S 3, S 4 basically you know it is actually a realization of single pole double throw switch. Therefore, you also have S 3 is equal to S 4 bar. This is how you operate the switch now. So, here again you need two getting signals. Let me say S 1 and S 3. From S 1 you can generate S 2, from S 3 you can generate S 4. And you can you have your V R O is equal to various values. V R O can be equal to plus 0.5 V D C. If S 1 and S 3 are on, if S 1 and S 3 are on, then your V R O will be equal to plus V D C by 2. If your S 2 and S 4 are on, then your V R O will be equal to minus V D C by 2. The other hand, if you have your S 1 and S 4 on, if you have S 1 and S 4 are on, 
if you have S1 and S4 are on, then what happens is you get 0, this potential is now effectively 0 and so VRO is equal to 0. The same thing can be realized by having S2 and S3 also on. Now, let us say the current can actually be bidirectional. So, here let us say you are having VRO is equal to 0. Now, let us say this has been achieved by having these two switches S1 and S4 on. So, the current conduction will be like this. This is how the current will be conducting. Now, let us say you want VRO is equal to 0 and the same direction of conduction, but by S2 and S3 are on now. So, what you will have is you will have sorry. So, this would be the direction of current flow, this you ignore that let me erase with a eraser. Okay. So, what you really have is, so the current actually flows in this direction through the transistor and it flows out. So, in one if for one set of switches the capacitor charges and the other set it discharges. So, what we need to do is we will actually apply VRO in one fashion and the other fashion alternatively to make sure that the capacitor does not get discharged. And you see that this capacitor its terminals are not connected to any firm potential whereas, this capacitor's terminals are connected to firm potential these two are actually connected to some DC su supply. So, they are connected to firm potentials and this is just a series connection of capacitors now. And if you look at here what do we have? The neither of these two terminals are connected to any firm potentials, they are actually connected to switches now. Therefore, you get the name flying capacitor, basically the capacitors terminals are not connected to firm potentials now, it is floating or it is flying capacitor inverter now. So, you have a unique way of connecting the pole to the positive DC bus or the negative bus, but if you look at the intermediate potential namely VRO is equal to 0, you have multiple ways of doing this and these multiple ways of doing this help you maintain the charge on the capacitor now. In flying capacitor this is certainly a challenge for you to first have the capacitors charged to this voltage level and continue to maintain that the capacitors remain charged at these voltage levels now. So, it has to be modulated and it has to be controlled in an appropriate fashion that these capacitor voltages are reasonably at 0.5 VDC that is what we have been trying to say now. So, there was uh, an additional point that we really had to make about a 3 level inverter now. If we say in a 3 level inverter, in a 3 level inverter we see that the current here actually flows into the DC bus neutral. In a 2 level inverter where does the current flow? The current only the ripple current here flows. One of the early slides if you look at, look at an early slide where we looked at this or maybe we can take this here. So, you will have some current and what flows through is will only be a ripple here, we will call it as some I tilde R. So, this is some I D C, it is a sum of these two is going to flow here, it is only ripple that flows through that. Now, what happens? There is no actual DC current or anything flows through that. In, in the case of a 3 level inverter, because you are connecting it to the midpoint, the load current sometimes flows through the DC bus neutral. Because of this you can have a situation where the top DC bus is charged or discharged in a particular fashion now. Let us say you have this like this now, if the load you know if, if your poles are connected only to the top throw or the bottom throw then the load current has let, let me say that the top two are on now. So, they are, they are conducting like this and there is a current flowing like this and then this is how the current flows, so it flows out. So, this is how the current is flowing. So, there is no current load current really flowing through the uh, capacitors. On the other hand let us say you have uh, A connected to the midpoint, A connected to midpoint that is this O. So, in that case you know for a particular direction of current if I look at current can be flowing in this direction. And let us say B is connected to the bottom throw, 
in that case current is flowing like this through the two transistors and flowing back here. So, you see that there is certain amount of current which flows through those DC bus capacitors, the load current is now flowing through the DC bus capacitors. So, there is going to be a substantial charging and discharging now. The advantage of a 3 level converter itself lies in the fact that it gives you you know a better waveform quality that is basically you are able to connect the pole to the midpoint that also provides you a disadvantage namely the DC bus is going to be uh, the balance could be lost. You need good modulation and control methods to really come up with that. Okay, so, that is something we will look at when we are doing a modulation of uh, DC bus uh, this thing. Now, let us just quickly go towards the end. So, this is what one leg of a flying capacitor converter that we had. So, if you want to go increase the number of levels, how do you do that? I just leave that to you. What you basically need is just as an exercise, you need more switches and you will need more stages of capacitors. How many stages, how many switches etcetera, I would leave them to you. So, it is possible for you to once again come up like a 3 level, 4 level, 5 level etcetera. And to quickly summarize, this neutral point clamp or diode clamp multi level inverter is what we have been discussing extensively and what we will use in this course. We also discussed flying capacitor now. This multi cell is about using two single phase inverters for one leg. You know a single phase inverter can produce some voltage output which is equal to 0 or the input voltage or the negative of the input voltage. So, you can have two of them connected connect them in in cascade. So, two of them can in series and uh, connection can give you some number of uh, voltage levels. So, it is also possible to realize multi level inverters using several single phase inverters, two single phase inverters for example, in one leg. So, those are the three important ways, but our focus will be primarily on neutral point clamped in this course now. So, I thank you very much for your attention and in the subsequent classes we will start discussing more about you know modulation. Before we go into modulation, we will quickly look at the various applications of voltage source converters in the next lecture. Thank you very much.